Hi, welcome to Energy 154, Unit Number 6. We'll be discussing nuclear energy and the possibility of sustainable fossil fuels today. So first I want to go over nuclear. As usual, we'll start with this chart, and I want you to calculate, for homework, the amount of nuclear energy that we get in the United States. So what is the percentage that nuclear provides to the total United States energy supply? So to go over how nuclear energy works, I'm going to show you this YouTube video. Weird, but the other information in the video is pretty good. So that's sort of the idea of how nuclear energy works. And there's two different types: the fusion and the fission. And what you want to remember is that the fusion is combining two atoms into a third one, and that releases energy. And fission is splitting one atom into two. So let's look at um, some facts about nuclear energy. So I wanted to show you this binding energy curve again. Sort of to figure out why this is important. So what happens is, is that as we, if we start from a lower point and go to a higher point on the binding energy curve, we release energy. So that's why when we went from the uranium-235 up to here with the krypton and the other um, atom, we release energy. Also, if we're going from um, some of the lower hydrogens to the heliums, that's when we release energy as well. Same with helium-4 up here. So. It's always, we always release energy if we go from the low point to the high point. So, I wanted to show you this graph of uranium production over the years. I'm going to ask you a homework question at the end of this discussion. If we look back in 1945, 1950, so really it started, um, the uh, uranium production started after nuclear bomb was um, dropped. But we see that we have a lot of uranium production without any reactor requirements before 1965 because um, the first commercial reactors were made in the mid-60s, made, uh, made in the mid-1960s. And then we get uh, more and more reactor requirements. And in the late 90s, and the same as today, is that we don't mine as much uranium as we use. So I want you to think a little bit about that and think about why there could be such a large difference um, recently between uranium production and uranium consumption and nuclear reactors. So for your discussion board, it's probably going to be the hardest discussion board. You're going to have to consider the two facts I give on these next two slides. So I give you some um, facts about nuclear fission here. And so basically, there's a couple different facts. Um, the big two things, and you can read more about this in your textbook, is that there's something called a um, fission, uh, just a once-through um, fission reactor. And that uses 162 tons per year of uranium for a one gigawatt plant. And the fast breeder fusion reactor uses only 2.7 tons of uranium for a one gigawatt plant. And we're going to estimate that the conventional uranium reserves are 4.7 million tons. But if we were to able to um, extract uranium from seawater, we could get 4,500 million tons. So just keep those facts in mind when you do the discussion board. Same sort of facts I want to give you for sustainable nuclear fusion. So um, we know, and again, if you want more information about this, go to your textbook. Um, if we use deuterium fusion, we can produce um, 100,000 kilowatt hours per gram of deuterium. And there's 33 grams of deuterium in one ton of ocean water. And there's 230 million tons of ocean water per person in the world. Okay, So use those facts when you're thinking about your discussion board. So now that we talked a bit about nuclear, I want to switch gears and, start and talk about sustainable fossil. And how I want to do this is I want to introduce a talk by one of the famous oil men of our time, and his name is T. Boone Pickens. So recently he's been investing a lot in wind farms, and he's been switching over now to promoting natural gas. So I really want to see his view on this. And these, this is through a TED talk. So if you haven't a little bit of a T. Boone Pickens view on, on natural gas. And I just want to show sort of one chart he showed from um, the talk. And so these are different, you know, reserves that um, in trillion cubic feet of natural gas that says how much natural gas you have, do we have. He also showed a little bit different picture, too, um, if we used uh, methane hydrates and other um, sources. So you might want to think about that um, for your homework, uh, for your discussion board, I mean. So 
what I want to show you, though, is a simple problem, a sample problem, though. So if the U.S. produced all of its energy used from natural gas, how many years would each of the three estimates above last? So we're going to use the three higher estimates. So this is how you would do that. So we look at the USA energy use, which is uh, about 99.2 quads per year. And then we convert that to how much natural gas um, we use per year in the U.S. So this is if we supplied all of the United States energy use with just natural gas. So all the transportation fuel, all the electricity generation, every, everything. Then if we use, let's say, the EIA estimate of 280 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, and um, we divide, we can we convert that to just cubic feet, because that's what unit we have up here, and we divide by the, how much natural gas we use per year, it would last 2.96 years. If we do the same thing with the USGS estimates and the industry estimates, we get 21 years and 42 years. So what you might want to think about, and I'll go to the discussion board here, is if we use all the information, if remember we discussed the sustainable nuclear fusion slide where I had a bunch of facts and figures for you from there, sustainable nuclear um, fusion and fission slides, and then all the information from the T. Boone Pickens talk we just watched. I want you to answer this question. Do you think nuclear power and natural gas could be a sustainable option going forward? So I want this discussion board to be a lot of calculations. So you can either do it them um, through equation editor in Word and post it in, on Blackboard or, or something. But I want you to show your equations and show your work. And I should see a lot of different equations as to why you want to back this up. Um, but you also want to look at the numbers that T. Boone Pickens used for methane hydrates and whatnot in his TED talk. So this, this discussion board is by far the hardest. It should take you a good hour or more. So really think about it and really show that you've been, done the calculations and whatnot behind uh, your assumptions and your uh, thinking. And that's it for Unit 6.